in this Silk Central Getting Started video, we're going to look at the process of creating tests and then associating to requirements. Once you're in Silk Central, first of all, select Tests from the top test menu, and this will take you then into the test pane. On the left hand side, we'll see the tree hierarchy for tests and how they've been organised in your environment. Here we have some demo data which is available for your use. Now on the right hand side is where we then display the detailed information for the asset which is shown on the left hand side. At the level project demo project we just have property content and history. However if we select customer administration and acceptance test here we can see that further information has been displayed relevant to the asset. If we first select properties, then at this point here, we'll see high level information to show has that test been executed, information of the execution plan it's associated, etc. On the step tab is where we'll see the detailed information for the steps which have been defined as part of this test. And these are the steps that you would execute at point of execution. At the top level, we have a test asset which is a test container and at this point this is there to allow you to specify and connect to any source control and automation tool at the bottom we can see examples of where the information would be stored whether it be a performance script a functional script or a unit script and this allows a connection to the source control now what we're going to do is we're now going to create a new test folder and a new child test as you could see, you could right click on the item and choose an option from that menu or alternatively on the top icons, you can also select to create a new folder and a test. Now here we have to create a new folder and you can give the folder a name, enter rich text information within that and that folder would then be displayed on the left hand side at the bottom of your tree. What we can now do again, we can right click and create a new child test. And this is the point here where again we create the test name and we can enter a high level information against the test. What we can also do, then do is at the bottom you'll see an option called type. Defaults to manual test but once we do a drop down on that, so at this point here if, this, if you were creating an automated test you would select the automation tool of choice, whether it be one of the unit test tools, whether it be Silk Performer, Silk Test, Test Partner, or even Process Executor to run a batch file. So this is where you'll specify that. We leave it as manual test, however, and we're now going to have the option to specify a plan time. I'm going to put in here 10 minutes to indicate my gut feeling is this test is going to take 10 minutes to execute. So that is now the shell of the test created. What we'll now see is it's taken us by default into the steps side of that test. And within here is where we're now going to enter the detail as to the steps for the test. Across the top, we'll see the different options to create new steps, create a call to a shared step, which is from your shared library of assets which are available in the project, as well as other actions. So let's create a new step and you'll see now at the bottom of the screen the edit step window has now been enabled. We can give each step a name as well as being able to put in the action description as to what we want the user to do at the point of performing the testing. And this information here again rich text format so if we wanted to include a URL we can put a URL in so at the point of execution they just need to click on it and the application will load up for them. So you format the step information as is relevant to you. At the bottom of the screen then we can set the expected results. So what should happen once we do that step? We can now select OK and create a new step and it just updates the information. We now enter a new name. We enter an action description, again rich text format for action and expected results and at the top we'll see this test building up. Now on the third step I'm actually going to do something slightly different. We're going to enter 
information that we wish to be updated at point of execution. So here I'm going to include a dollar sign which indicates I want to use a variable and then in my case I want to call this name and I've used the capital N and this introduces the concept of data driven manual testing. I update the expected results. Now that dollar sign name when I do my execution if I've set a parameter called that be replaced with the actual data. At the top we'll see steps 1, 2 and 3 have been created and we'll see the summary. Now what I can do is I can now add an attribute to this test and this may help for searching and finding information or for the importance. So here I have a predefined attribute called importance which I set to high and select OK. And these attributes are customizable to your organization. So you can create new attributes and make this flexible to your process. I'm now going to select the parameter tab and I'm going to select add custom parameter and the use of parameters in this way totally optional um, and it's just as an example but here I create a name of a parameter called name with a capital N and I have a value which I enter called Becky. At the top we'll see now that there's a parameter called with a value. Now here I'm putting the value at this point but you can also specify the value at point of execution. Now that word Becky would then be replaced where I've used my dollar sign name. So the next thing to do is we have a test. Previously we've created a requirement. Let's now assign the test to a requirement. So on the assigned requirements, we'll see on the right hand side the list of requirements. We can filter by them or we can just select from the tree hierarchy. So I'm going to select my new requirement that I'd previously created. By selecting on the arrow, it adds that requirement to my test. Now, when I click on the new requirement, which is blue and a hyperlink, it will go to the requirements module direct to that requirement. So now you can see we're in the requirement tab and it's automatically brought up the information for that requirement. On the right hand side, we can see the properties and the detailed information. And in here we have the assigned test section and you can see now in the assigned test we can see the test has been assigned. On the right hand side of the window we have as we did in the test pane where we can see requirements here we have that hierarchy of the tests and a filter at the top. This point here we could have if we already had the tests available when we created the requirements could have straight away added it at that point. Now we have a test and a requirement associated for execution.